What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of That Hobby Show. Uh, I am Justin from Charm City Autographs, if you didn't know that by now. And with me, as always, is Houston from Chasing the Graph. What is going on? Not a whole lot, my man. Another weekend that flew by. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely going by uh, crazy fast. And with... Uh, I don't know how many of our viewers are NASCAR fans, but the NASCAR race just got over. So it's like, uh, kind of makes it feel earlier in the day than what it actually is. Cause out here on the West coast, uh, the good thing is the races start at like 11 AM. So by like two or three, you know, it's over. So, I mean, it, it, it's kind of weird how your body's like set up, uh, or adjust to, uh certain things like it knows what time it is you know what i'm saying Definitely. yeah so, absolutely that biological clock <laughs> <laughs> yeah right so uh last week uh I, I guess i'll get into my week uh last week we were talking about my trip to texas to check out some minor league baseball uh it did not go as planned but i think with everything that happened, uh, it actually could not have gone any better, if I'm being honest. So uh, me and my middle son, we uh, we were, our, our first trip was going to be in El Paso to see the El Paso Chihuahuas take on the Oklahoma City Dodgers. So that's the Dodgers and the Padres AAA affiliate. Uh, my goal really that – because we were only going to be in El Paso for one night for that game. And then we were going to drive a little bit to Round Rock because it was like a nine hour drive from El Paso. And then we were going to spend two days in Round Rock, Texas. So uh, my goal really was to get these two jerseys signed by Patrick Kivlahan. Uh, he, he plays for the Padres. He's going to be playing for Team USA in the Olympics uh, playing baseball. Right. So I wanted to get those two jerseys signed because with COVID this year, they uh, didn't allow fans to the practices at spring training. And that's where, you know, you can get a ton, a ton of autographs. Right. So I wanted to get those signed. So that was the mission. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, we could get uh, Yoshitomo Satsugo after the game. He plays for the Dodgers. So uh, it ended up – I got the jersey signed by Patrick. Uh, we, uh, they're, so their field is set up really weird. Their, uh, their bullpen is completely wide open. It's on the third base side, and so they have to set up like an L screen behind the catcher during the game, right? And with the netting, uh, there's – a little slit in it right in the middle of the bullpen. So if you're going to get autographs, you got to get them as soon as you get in there because once the pitcher starts warming up, you're not getting autographs there. And then there's another one right beside the dugout, uh, another little hole in the net. So, But the thing was, Chihuahua's website said due to COVID-19, no autographs are allowed. And when we got there, there we couldn't. I was trying to look to see if anybody's carrying the notebook or you know looking for sharpies, but I couldn't find. I didn't see anybody that was trying to get autographs. Right. So me and my son were waiting, we're waiting, and I'm trying to uh, see how things are going. And then like 15 minutes before first pitch, we see Patrick, and I'm like, "All right, dude, let's do it. We're only going to be here for one night anyway. If they kick us out." We're going to get our jersey, our our jersey signed, and then we're going to get out of here anyway, you know. And uh, so we go down. Uh, I yell for Patrick. My son's holding up his one jersey, and he has that look. He's like, "You got to be kidding me, man!" And he's like, "I'm coming over." And then I hold up my, and I'm holding up his uh, D backs jersey, and he's like, "Like his mind is blown, right?" So all the players are warming up, you know, and he's yelling at his friends to look at this and they're all, you know, they're giving him a hard time and everything. Right. So, uh, his Padres Jersey from a few years back, it's their, uh, every Sunday 
they wear a military jersey, right? So this was back in the day when they did the uh, Navy camo pattern. And then his uh, D-backs jersey. So I don't know if you can – and it, the autographs turned out great, man. And uh, Really, really good, definitely. Yeah, and he couldn't have been nicer, uh, like super, super nice. And he was like, this is the first time this has ever happened. I was like, oh, man, that's – that's awesome, but it kind of sucks, you know, that nobody ever had your jersey. And uh, he's like, uh, where are you guys sitting at? I'm going to try and get you a baseball. And we're like, we're sitting in the lawn. So their lawn seats are, are kind of weird. They go from left field to left center field. And he's like, oh, well, I'm playing right field. So, but, uh, but I'll see, you know. So I was like, cool. That was awesome. Me, me and my son, we were on cloud nine. Uh, we got the jerseys. And then uh, a few innings later, the center field comes over to the bleachers. And he's like, excuse me, sir. I'm like, I'm looking around like, who the hell is this dude calling sir? And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> hey, I'm the sir. And uh, he's like, are you the guy that had the Kivlahan jersey? And I was like, yeah, yeah, what's up? And he goes, uh, and this is when he's supposed to be warming up with the uh, left fielder and everything. And he's like, uh, uh, he has something for you guys. He wanted you to come over to the dugout. I'm like, this is like the fourth inning. I'm like, does he want me to come over during the game or after? He's like, I don't know, man. And then he just started warming <laughs> up again, right? So then me and my son, you know, were like, what could it be? I'm like, well, if it was a baseball, he, he would have just gave it to the center fielder to throw it up to us. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so everything's lining up great. Uh, it's like the sixth inning and the game's only been going on for like an hour and a half. I'm like, sweet. This is going to be, this game's going to be over by like eight, eight thirty, And then, uh, we'll be able to get on the road. You know, I'll be able to get a couple hours of driving in before I want to hit up the hotel, you know, to try and sleep. Cause I was, you know, doing the driving all by myself and everything. And, uh, then the, uh, the skies, dude. They just they're they're getting crazy dark. Uh, I would say angry. Uh, I got one of those notifications on my phone about a severe storm, right? Like so it's like the seventh inning, seventh inning, right? And all hell just breaks loose with the weather. Uh, so we had gone to take cover beforehand because you know it was kind of looking bad and I'm like, I, I didn't want my son going over to the dugout, you know, and getting struck by lightning or something crazy like that. Cause it was, it was coming down, dude. So it was 80 mile an hour, uh, winds and golf ball size hail. And, uh, so finally they, they call the game. They're like, all right, we're going to make this up tomorrow. And so I start driving right, and I can't drive in that. I, I, I can't drive in the weather. So uh, we pull over into a parking lot, and I start talking to him. I'm like, all right, dude, like, what do you want to do, bud? Uh, I don't know what Patrick has for us. Uh, it could be something really cool. It could be something crappy. But I was like, if it, if it was a baseball, we would have gotten it, you know? So I'm like, I'm like, what do you want to do? We can skip going to uh, Round Rock, driving the extra nine hours that way. And then I reminded him, Wednesday morning, it's a 13-hour drive from Round Rock back to Tucson. And uh, so we made, we made the call to stay in Tucson, right? Or I'm sorry, not Tucson, to stay in El Paso. So got a hotel. I was able to cancel the hotel in Round Rock without paying a fee. Uh, the only crappy thing is I had some stuff set up with Twitter friends that I was going to go meet them. Uh, so I had to explain to them all that. Right. So we, uh, so the next day we go back and we get our tickets and then there's like seven or eight people there that are trying to get autographs. So I'm like, okay, so maybe autographs are allowed. Right. So we get uh dugout seats beside the, uh, Oklahoma city Dodgers, uh, dugout. And what they're going to do, they were going to pick up the previous night's game in the seventh inning. And then after that, they would play that night's game, but it was only going to be a seven inning game. So I'm like, cool, uh, I get to go to bed early. And then uh, 
So Yoshi comes out, dude signs everything for us. He signed 11 or 12 cards and we were over the moon, right? And then, uh, so Patrick comes out on the other side, my son hauls ass over there, right? And then, uh, so Patrick gave him a, uh, his bat that he used the night before. So it said, thank you for the support. Go USA. And it's unbroken too. So sick. Yeah. Cause we were talking to him about the Olympics and everything, you know? And then, uh, so yeah. So my son over the moon, he loves El Paso. He wants to go back. He thinks it's the greatest city in the free world. Right. And then, uh, so understandably so. Yeah, right? And it's crazy because he got a couple baseballs and just there's more shit that people just hand to him and he's like, they come so easy for him. And uh, so they're finishing up that game, right? And I hear Yoshi break a bat. I was like, I like you know that sound. I was like, he broke a bat. So my son's like, all right, I'm going to uh, – he goes, I'm going to go ask him for his bat, right? So – they have a half hour break in between the games. So he asked Yoshi if he can have his bat and Yoshi goes like that. Right. And then, uh, and my son's like, he's coming over, he's coming over. And I'm like, really? And, uh, so we got Yoshi's, uh, broken bat and he gave us his, uh, American autograph on this one. And it's pretty cool too. Cause, uh, like the born on date from the bat, I don't know if you can see it, but it was, uh, July 7th of this year so the bat was only a couple days old and uh it's awesome yeah so after the end of that game we had two bats he had a couple baseballs um uh, and we were we were doing really good on autographs uh at the end of three days we ended up getting 30 cards signed that was uh and that was really not even trying all that hard and then third day we're uh at the dugout right we're at the Dodgers dugout. And then one of the clubhouse attendants uh, takes this off the wall and gives it to my son from the night before the uh, uh, the line the lineup card. And then I don't have – I have to find my books, but they uh, also had the home uh, team's little lineup card that was signed by their manager, uh, Edwin Rodriguez. So uh, then that day, he just spent the day trying to get his uh, lineup card signed and everything. But, yeah, dude. So two bats, two jerseys, lineup card, uh, 30 cards signed, and six baseballs. And, yeah. yeah Talk about backing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, like, even uh, the guy that we wanted to see in Round Rock uh, – even if he signed all the cards and everything, I don't think we could have had a better time than what we did in El Paso. And it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, my, uh, father of the year, uh, award moment. Um, uh, I did not realize that there is a, uh, Mexican version of Hooters slash Twin Peaks, uh, a restaurant. It was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, how do you, uh, Oso Loco. I think it was Crazy Eyes in Spanish. Oso Loco's Sports Cantina. I was like, oh, wow, this place looks super fun, right? Uh, so I walked in and the hostess, uh, her ass is hanging out of a thong <laughs> and a bikini that was uh, really maybe three sizes too small, just covering up her nipples and everything. And I was like, and I, I should have turned around and walked out and, but I was like so dumbfounded and like gobsmacked from what I was seeing. So, uh, yeah, if you ever see the place called Oso Loco Sports Cantina, it is the uh, Mexican Twin Peaks. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can imagine that's kind of like culture shock walking in there, like and just being yeah. like, uh, and I mean, I mean, I don't know if you can really leave or not at that point, considering how awkward it would just be 
you know, to just be like, oh, I'm not supposed to be here and leave. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was pretty crazy, but their food, their food was decent. So yeah, and they had little TVs at the uh, at all the tables. So he just was watching the soccer highlights. So instead of watching the <laughs> the, the uh, health violations, walking around uh, carrying our food and everything. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, it it was awesome. Uh. He can't wait to go back. He wants to go back. Uh, there is a series in September where Round Rock is coming to El Paso. So there is a chance that uh, if uh, that Korean pitcher is still with Round Rock that we could go, hopefully, fingers crossed. And then Because yeah. uh, there in El Paso, it's crazy easy to get autographs, even with the Nets. But then uh, after the game, there's really only three exits that the players can take, and they're all within maybe 50 yards of each other. So, yeah, it's – it's yeah. And it's, tickets are crazy cheap too, man. But, yeah, it was awesome. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was my baseball uh, trip for this past weekend, and I cannot tell you how good it felt to – be able to get autographs and stuff and i was gonna say i think you guys did extremely well for the chihuahuas not to allow autographs yeah yeah and it was weird uh i guess the players aren't supposed to be doing autographs but they're doing it anyway so the ushers don't really enforce it where uh when we were getting our jersey signed, the usher was like, I can't hand them the pin. You need to do it. I was like, okay, that's cool. I wasn't going to ha- ask you that anyway. And then the next day, like we were standing beside the dugout and we got in trouble for that. There's a railing that kind of uh, splits the walkway in half, you know, so that way you can uh, separate the people going up and coming down. So he's like, you can't be on this side of the railing. You need to get on the other side. That was really the only COVID uh, enforcement stuff that they were doing. Uh, but other than that, like that first day, if I wasn't so hesitant, we probably could have got damn near all of our cards signed. And then at the end of the games, like my son, uh, I was like, there's so-and-so. And he'd be he'd take my book and he'd go running. I'm too old to run after the dudes. Yeah, uh, you know. So I mean, if I had no shame, then we we could have did a lot uh, better job. But uh, nah. Other than that, man, we we did really good, and uh, there was a lot of guys that I didn't expect to uh, that would sign, knowing uh, how they are, and they were really really awesome. So yeah, they just kind of got that that refreshing year of. They went a whole season, you know, they didn't play baseball, which sucks, but they, they had a whole entire year where no one was in their face. No one was, you know, yelling yeah. their name and no one was like, because I've been especially, it's especially bad at Panther practice where, like, if somebody's walking by and they're like, hey, you know, Christian, will you sign for me? And they either say no or they just keep walking and ignore them. The people will straight up be like, you ain't shit no way. Like, I ain't going to defend if she drafted you or anything or, like you ain't ever going to win a Super Bowl or something like that. And so while, you know, I'm sure they hear worse things throughout their entire career, you know, and they probably just had a refreshing year off people not being in their face, but they might have a, you know, that, 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 that callus that they had might've wore down a little bit. And so now they're just working on building it back up until they're like, we're good here. <laughs> yeah. They, they definitely weren't burned out. Cause, uh, so, like I said, with spring training, practices were closed to the public. That's where you get a lot of your autographs. And then during the spring training games, when they started letting people in, every stadium uh, had that autographs are not allowed. So I don't think you could really interact with them at all. And I'm pretty sure, like, the first couple rows at all the stadiums, they didn't sell those seats. And they were doing that weird seating pod thing. Yeah. Where- you had to set in groups of two or four and then out in the outfield lawn, they had boxes 
uh, like taped out that, yeah. So maybe, maybe that's why they weren't burned out. But, uh, I honestly wish I would have, uh, I wish I would have had more cards, more stuff to get signed. Uh, cause yeah, everybody was super cool. Uh, except for Bill Hasselman, he was tough. He only did two, uh, only had four cards, but he'd only do two for my son. So, and he ignored me the whole time. So, uh, I, I don't know. But, it's uh, so funny how that it's so funny how that works too because like um at the Panthers practices Greg Olson he'll sign for you and like the first time I got him he had just he that was the first of two times that he had like broke his ankle pretty much or fractured it and he wasn't he it was only like a two week old injury at the time so. I wasn't even expecting him to be, you know, in the practices. He's like in a walking boot. So he's probably going to like, you know, hang out at home and then maybe come back for like, you know, some type of like weightlifting or something like that. But he was actually at the practice and he was only in the practice for maybe like 30 minutes. And when he came out, I was like, oh, I was like, hey, Greg, will you sign this for me? And he was like, yeah, man, I got you. And I was like, how's that foot? And he just said, good. And then like, went on of course he could have been like you know just ignored me but the guy about three feet beside him he had his kid and he's like hey buddy how are you doing today like you want to get a picture with me do you want me to sign your shirt do you mean to sign your ball do you mean to sign your forehead do you want me to sign your cleat all oh, that was nice of your dad to bring me today how long have you been a panthers fan like have you always liked football but with me it was like good <laughs> yeah 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 and that's kind of the way uh Kim Lahan was uh, Patrick with with my son. He was super cool, and it was a uh, it was like a proud father moment for me because I don't know if anybody's ever uh, gone to a, a sporting event with kids, but trying to keep them entertained is like it's like they don't want anything to do with the sporting event going on on the field. But after his interaction with Patrick. He was actually paying attention to him out in the outfield. It was like, look at how he's standing and look at how he's doing this and that. So, and that happened on the first day. So that was awesome where I had three days of watching baseball where all he wanted to do was watch the game. Like there was a little play area behind us. He didn't want nothing to do with any of that. And uh, yeah, every time Patrick would come out to the outfield, he'd wave, you know, so like I'm, pretty sure he thinks they're best friends. And then, uh, like he's, he's bothering me. Uh, he wants to watch the Olympics, uh, to see if Patrick's going to be playing and everything. So yeah, it's, uh, it's super cool. And it, I wish I would have told Patrick about that. Like the, I don't even know if it was like five minutes. Uh, even if you added up all the interactions throughout those three days, if it, maybe five, 10 minutes tops, but the impact that those five to 10 minutes had on him and he's made a fan for life. Cause, uh, so he got the two jerseys signed. He got the bat. Uh, he had him sign his scorecard. He bought a hat. He had him sign his hat. Patrick was super nice, uh, uh, about everything. So, uh, my, like he, he definitely made a fan for life and my son was, he was like, man, we almost have all of his jerseys of the teams that he's played for. Let's let's try and get them all. I'm like, okay, sure. And then I looked up how many teams he's played for. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, he's played for the Mariners, the Reds, the Pirates. One of the teams in Canada – well, it's only one team now in Canada. I think the Blue Jays. So, yeah, if anybody has Patrick Kivlahan jerseys, uh, we are buyers. And then I like well, Jersey rainbow, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, hell, you could do a rainbow just with the Padres, with all the different jerseys combinations that they have, them and the D-backs. Uh, but so yeah, I told him like next year if Patrick signs with the Padres, you can wear his uh, Padres jersey to uh, spring training next year and see if he remembers you. So yeah, that'll be fun. So hopefully, hopefully he he resigns with the Padres or a team that has spring training in Arizona. That'd be dope. That'd yeah. work out for you guys. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, remember you and then, you know, just kind of 
Yeah, he uh, he remembered us uh, after every game. Uh, well, not this, not the first game, but uh, like the last night, his family was there. Uh, his wife and kids and everything came out, dapped us up and everything. Because uh, he was, he's actually in your neck of the woods now uh, with Team USA. They are in uh, uh, USA Baseball headquarters. I, I want to say is in Cary. Gotcha. Yeah. So they are there for their little mini camp. Uh, what's today? Mon- what is Sunday? Today's Sunday. So I think they all got there on Friday. So the Team USA Olympic team is in North Carolina right now, and then I don't know who they're going to be playing uh, or what their schedule looks like. I know uh, Team Israel, they've been touring up and down the East Coast uh, for their uh, Olympic warm-up before they all head off to Tokyo. So, yeah, how far is Kerry from you? Uh, it's about 45 minutes. It's not far at all. Really? Yeah. Well, Check it out, man. You never know. Uh, they got some good prospects too for Team USA. So, yeah, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, oh, what's up? Like when I when the sock puppets had the freshman and sophomore Team USA, I should have. I should have at least tried to get more autographs than I did. Other than you know getting too low, but I was just so focused on getting him, I didn't even really you know think about getting anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, that's the way it was with us our first day in El Paso. Like, it was the jerseys, you know, get those signed. And then and everything else is, uh, you know, a bonus. Yeah, but, uh, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they might actually be playing the collegiate team. Who knows? Because uh, I want to say that's where they moved the headquarters. Or the headquarters is in Durham. I can't remember. But, uh. Yeah. It's about 45 minutes, and Durham's about an hour, and I still kick myself for not going to Durham and seeing, you know, Franco play because it yeah. is far away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, maybe he runs into a slump like Kellenic and they send him down for a little bit, you know? Yeah, it's, it's entirely possible because I know um, I'm friends with a guy. He – uh he always, every year, uh, of course, not last year, he did it 17, 18, and 19. Um, I've got team sign balls from the Frisco uh, Rough Riders, which is the AA Rangers affiliate. Yeah. And um, they send uh, their players down for, like, a game or two, like a, a small, like, rehab stint of sorts. And there was twice there. Because some obviously it's hard to get the ball filled up on one game. So he would normally – I would just pay him. Literally, it was so nice of him to do it. He would literally just charge me 20 bucks for the ball and then $5 to ship it. And he would get it signed over multiple games and stuff like that. But there was one game where uh, Rogue Man had got sent down for one game. And he he was like – he's like, I know it's going to be kind of obscure on the team ball. He was like, but I'm going to try to get him on it just so you have a, you know, Rogue Man autograph. And he – uh, messaged me later that night and was like, he said there were so many people trying to get his autograph, and he's like, he turned every single one of them down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the only bad thing about uh, the, some of the rehab assignments. Like, for us, so in El Paso, uh, Austin Nola, the Padres first base, or sorry, catcher, he was doing a rehab assignment in El Paso. Uh, I don't think there was anybody there to get his autograph. So it, 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 it's kind of weird, but the crappy thing is we'll have to get him during spring training. Cause he's on that lineup card, but uh, I didn't have any cards of him. You know, he, he only has a couple cards and stuff like that out. But when I lived in California and I was going to Stockton ports games, uh, low A affiliate, or at the time they were the high A affiliate of the A's. When there was uh, guys there for rehab assignments, I stopped going uh, because the crowd was just insane. Like, uh, it they would almost sell the game out, you know, 10,000 people just to see, uh, like, Angel Pagan or Sean Doolittle and stuff. And then 
the bad thing is everybody's there to see this person hoping that they're going to get their autograph, but they're not there to sign autographs. They're there to like, you know, get, get their hacks in at the cage at the batting cage or uh keep working out in the bullpen until it's time for them to come in you know and then after that they're off getting treatment so they're they're doing their rehab you know and then people get all butt hurt but it would yeah it it, it got to the point because uh it was weird the a's would always send their guys to stockton for rehab plus i mean it 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 was close, even though it's a ball, you're yeah. still well, hell, maybe 45 minutes to Oakland from Stockton. Uh, so yeah, they would send them there instead of, uh, over to Sacramento uh, at the time when they were the, uh, when Sacramento was the A's affiliate. So, yeah. Yeah. And that, um, he had already got it. I can't remember what year it was, but he had already got the, the ball signed for me and everything and he had already shipped it. But he messaged me and was like, uh, Andrews had got sent down for two games, I think it was. And he sent me like this massive stack and was like, Elvis signed for anybody and everybody. And I'm just like, I'm just deleting your messages, man, because I don't want to see this. Like you're really? just like Yeah, you're just like taking a taking a knife and like pushing it in my heart. It's like pulling it in and out. And he um he had a bunch of custom cards of Andrews just in case he ever met him or seen him. And he signed all of those. He signed like an eight by 10, signed a bunch of like regular tops cards for him and everything. And I'm just like, I can't believe Elvis signed all those for you. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. He was like, yeah, he's like, he signed for a bunch of people before the game, but after the game, he was just like, yeah, yeah. That's weird. Cause uh, he was always, he wasn't, he was difficult in spring training and he was usually one per, uh, but he has a beautiful autograph. I love and, it. Yeah. yeah. I just wish he wouldn't put the lines through it. I don't get that. There's a few guys that do it. So I think it's their thing that they do, but, uh, yeah. Uh, he, he has the guy played for the Royals. He was a catcher. Jesus Atencio. His was like that with like the name and cursive and then the two lines through it. Yeah, and then uh, Miguel Andujar for the Yankees. He also does that too. But, yeah, I got Elvis way back in the day when he was in the Arizona Fall League before he got traded to the uh, Rangers. So then he was cool. He would sign everything, you know, because, I mean, he it was only like his second year in the, yeah. you know, playing baseball or whatever. Yeah, and he hadn't built up that callus we were talking, talking about. Of yeah, yeah, right screaming at him and then talking shit to him when he doesn't sign for him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, what do you have coming up down the pipeline for chasing the graph? I did um, see uh, you have a stack sale going on, right? Yeah, it's going to um, – I haven't had anybody claim a card in like three or four days, so I've already got totals together, but I'm leaving it open um, until probably like five tomorrow and then um, – if nobody claims anything, then totals will be sent out like seven or eight tomorrow. I've had absolutely zero luck selling shit on Twitter. My Brett Gardner independence parallel out of 76 sold on eBay for $2 and 25 cents. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Wow. And there's a, I forget the guy's name on Twitter, but his daughter is like a uh, Brett Gardner super collector. Yeah, I think so, because I listed it for, like, God, two months. I know people were getting tired of seeing that thing being listed. And I think um, um, some he got tagged two different times, and both times he was like, it's an awesome card, but she already has one. So, Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I've had uh, – I say I've had zero luck, but I did sell a small uh, – uh, Key Brian Hayes lot for ten dollars last night, but that's literally the it was three cards, and that's the first three cards I've sold in probably three weeks now on Twitter. Mm. So I was like, I'll try eBay. I really hate eBay. I never have any luck with it as far as the art goes. I feel like I feel like I could list like a one of one Babe Ruth autograph, and it would end an auction at like thirteen dollars or something. Yeah, just. Everything that's been going on lately with eBay, with uh, 
the returns and everything really, really scares me about getting scammed. Uh, but uh, so, yeah. And plus, I don't think I really have anything that I would want to list on eBay that would offset the fees enough. You know what I mean? And then I'm not in role. I, so the PWE, uh, the eBay envelope, I'm not, I don't know if you need to enroll in that to be a part of it. So yeah, I just try and stick to Twitter. Uh, I did get lucky though. The other day, uh, I was posting on a, there's a Facebook group that I'm in about minor league autographs. Right. And there's a lot of people that are set collectors that try and get, not only do they collect the set, they try to get the entire set signed. And one of the guys that I told you was kind of a dick in previous years was super cool. And I had a double of him, uh, Sheldon noisy. Uh, his, his name is spelled like noose, but it's pronounced noisy. And, uh, somebody hit me up and wanted to know if I'd sell it. I was like, sure, man, four bucks. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll, you know, I'll take it. Uh, but yeah, that's like the last thing that I've sold in, I don't know, months. So yeah, but uh, I've been seeing a lot of cool stuff on Twitter that I want to buy, but I'm trying to do that. You need to sell some stuff, you know, before. Yeah, the, the, the card purchases, pay for the card purchases, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, but uh I did find one card that I uh, I purchased. I'm still waiting to figure out if I get scammed or not. Uh, so I, because so it's a Roy Holiday autograph, uh, and it's a uh, certified autograph. And how much do you think the guy had it listed for? Oh my God! I probably is a card or is a card. Yeah, it's the Fleer uh, Incredible subset. So it's the card, and then it has like the cut, sign cut signature embedded in the card. Um, I'd probably say just a number off the top of my head, probably somewhere around 110. You got the last part right. $10 PWE. So I was like, so I hit him up. Yeah, right. So I'm like, okay, uh, I looked on Twitter or I looked on eBay first, looked at the sold listings, you know, all that. There's like one or two of them on there. I'm selling for triple digits. Uh, and then I looked on there first to see if that card even exists. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just if it was one of those, what are they? Like the ACO art cards that people think are the real autographs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I wanted to make sure. Uh, the picture looks good. I seem to send me a pic of the back. The back looks good. And I said, if this is really $10, I'll take it. And he's like, sold. I'm like, I'm like, all right, cool. So I, uh, I got on e or got on PayPal, sent him uh, 12, uh, goods and services to cover the fee. And then, uh, we're, we'll see what happens in a couple weeks. Uh, either, I got an art card or I got an authentic autograph. So fingers yeah. crossed for the latter. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, this is still, he's scamming me. He's got to be trying to scam me. So that's why I went goods and services. And then, uh, he asked me if I had Venmo. Uh, I have Venmo, but I said, no, I don't PayPal only because, uh, I'm, I'm not sure there's any way on Venmo that you can get your money back. I've seen people say that there is, but I couldn't even begin to tell you the process or what kind of, uh, I guess, evidence. Yeah, I don't know. Because isn't there a premium version of Venmo? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've never, I mean, I use Venmo to send money, but I don't, I've very yeah. rarely. Been yeah, because I do it, you know, with my friends, you know, when we're at work for, hey, you're buying lunch or I'm buying lunch and we just Venmo each other cash, you know, because with COVID, nobody carries cash anywhere. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I was like, nah, PayPal only. And he, he sent me a screen name and I was like, dude, that's not working. So he sent me an email. Email address is working. So, yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Fingers crossed that it's not one of those 
art cards, but from everything that I could see, it's a legit Roy Holiday autograph for ten bucks PWE. But that's the that's the other thing though PWE. Uh, he could be like, I don't know, bro. I sent it, man, and ugh, I don't know, you know. But I'm kind of kind of dealing with that now. I sent somebody. Uh, somebody bought a two dollar card from me uh-huh. and I mailed it three weeks to a month ago. And then, you know, late last week they were saying, Hey, I still haven't gotten it yet. And I'm just like, I don't, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, you know? So here's what I do when, uh, I love selling PWE. I, uh, so I will take a picture of the envelope. I think I've discussed this before. So I'll take a picture of the envelope with their address on it, send it to them. And I'm like, does this address look good? Everything look good? They give me the thumbs up or the heart or fire emoji. I know I'm good. So then after that, I put my return label and my stamp on there because I'm cheap and I don't want to waste them if something's wrong. And then I'll send them another picture of the envelope with the return address and uh, the stamp on it. So they know that I at least took a picture of that and it's going out to them in the mail. Yeah. So. Yeah. This was, of course, this is like one of like three cards that I didn't do that with that I've sold in the last like six to eight months. Yeah. And the other two, it was just literally like, like, Oh crap. They bought this card yesterday and I haven't shipped it yet. So I just threw it together, put a stamp on it and put it in the mailbox. Mm-hmm. And with this one, it was a little bit more of a, a, a backstory to it. But um, I literally just, you know, put an address on it, put a stamp on it, and threw it in the mailbox. And, of course, I didn't take a picture of it. So, But, I mean, if somebody thinks I'm trying to scam them out of $2, then I don't really see how that's my problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm just always paranoid, though, because, uh, like, I don't want to get put on one of those scammer lists. Because people are so quick to uh, – to point the finger instead of ask a question. Uh, and then they put you on blast on, you know, Twitter. And then you start reading the comments and they're like, Oh, good catch, man. Block, 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 block. And yeah. they're, they're, you know, say it only takes that one bad, you know, uh, interaction over your Dylan Carlson base card, you know, to like derail your side hustle. You know, yeah, 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 Yeah. it just takes that one and then it's just a domino effect from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so your stack sale ends tomorrow. Are you still using the hashtag uh, chasing the stacks? So if any of our viewers want to uh, scoop in and uh, snipe up some deals. Yeah, definitely. And there's still probably... Oh God, if I had to guess, probably 60 to 70 uh, top series two rookies at like 50 cent a piece that haven't been claimed. So, I mean. Cool. I'll have to see if you have any uh, Kim Ha Song rookies and then uh, claim a few. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I have them. I thought I had them like right here, but. Yeah. I'm sure I have the the base and the blue parallel of him. Oh, okay. The, um, wait, the base parallel? The base uh, rookie and the series or the blue Walmart blue parallel rookie. Oh, really? I, I think so. Yeah, I'll have to look. But and I really thought I had them all. Nice. Thought, and he I, has. Uh, he has the short print and the super short print too. Yeah, I thought I had them because I've got all of my rookies separate from like the regular, the regular stack. That's my that's my series two rookies. Mm. Oh, yeah. we got a uh, Yaku TV English. Uh, yes, you did miss the uh, you you missed the OKC talk. Uh, but yeah, Yoshi. Ooh, yeah. Uh, put that one to the side for me. And the the bad thing 
what really makes me mad about that card, and it's the same thing the Tops did last year with uh, Shogo Akiyama. They had plenty of time to get a picture of him in spring training. Yeah. And that is an airbrushed jersey from South Korea. That is the Gochuk Sky Dome. And uh, so his – yeah, I'll probably need to put in a claim for that too, even though he's been a dick and he doesn't sign through the mail. Yeah, uh, this is not a 50. I don't know if you can see it up there or not. Yeah, it's kind of tough with the glare. But, yeah, so they did that uh, with Shogo in his last year's tops card. They uh, – yeah, they, they just airbrushed it. I, I kind of thought it was – it looked to me, which I just thought it was because it was the blue, like parallel. It looked yeah. photoshopped a little bit to me, but I thought maybe just because it was blue, different border, different back background color contrast, blue brown, that kind of thing. But yeah, uh, and he makes a good point too. But uh, Leaf, so Leaf also makes uh, baseball cards, right? So they have a Kim Ha Song card uh, this year. And it's a picture of him in his Korean jersey. They didn't airbrush shit out. So it's a straight-up Korean jersey, and it looks pretty awesome. Uh, it's the latest Leaf release that came out. Uh, I forget what it's called. They always have weird names, but uh, I want to try and get that. But, yeah, so uh, show this again for Skeller Ads or Yaku. Sorry. He gave me his English autograph on this on this one, and then on all the cards that he did for us, he gave us his Japanese autograph. And then we uh, – the weird thing is, so the third – the last day we were in El Paso was the last series for Oklahoma City, and uh, Yoshi was nowhere to be seen. So I was like, oh, my God, did the dude get released? Is he going back to Japan? So uh, I got to get back on the interwebs and see if uh, he's even still with the Dodgers or not. Cause we have him on the, uh, we need to get him here on the scorecard. Yeah. To, uh, sign that. Maybe give me an autograph in English and in uh, Japanese, but uh, yeah. So Panini, Panini did that with Don Russ. Uh, yeah. And also uh, I think Leaf, didn't uh, Otani's rookie year, Leaf came out with a box of just Otani cards, and I think it was his uh, Nippon Hamfighters uniform, and they just airbrushed. Uh... Yeah, it's uh, so the weird thing is uh, he wasn't even in the dugout at all. Uh, his translator wasn't there or anything, because usually Yoshi is the he – was, he was always the first guy in the dugout. Uh, for both teams, like he would hang out in the dugout, talk to people. Uh, super, really nice guy. I I didn't think he was uh going to be that nice, and uh, but yeah, he didn't even come out into the dugout at all. So that's what kind of made us worried that maybe he wasn't still with them or not. But yeah, uh, and then yeah, I don't have any more baseball related stuff going on for a while. Uh. I've been doing a little bit of TTM. Uh, I've been on a uh, kind of a cold streak. So uh, I, I uh, mailed off a couple cards to old reliable Brooks Robinson. So, uh, you know, I mean, a Hall of Famer for 10 bucks a piece. You know, you can't beat okay. that. And uh, he, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I get them back within two weeks. And then, uh, I don't know if you guys see my Twitter or Facebook, but I got Bill Mazeroski back. So another Hall of Famer that signs for 10 bucks. So I got those two back in a little over a month. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that, dude, I got nothing else going on. The, um, the Hickory Craw Dads, they're playing the Greensboro Grasshoppers, the six-game homestand, I think. Yep. <laughs> That's what made me think about it. The they are, yeah, and uh, the grasshoppers in Greensboro is only like 25 minutes from us, and um, I think they're playing the second through like the eighth of August. So I'm definitely gonna go to at least one game because I've got a, a few Justin uh, Foscue 
Oh, he has so, a, cool autograph, a short autograph, but I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's better than like, oh my God, like CD Lambs, which, you know, football, baseball, but CD yeah. Lambs is like a circle with like a squiggly. Like, a D, like that runs into an L kind of like, yeah. almost, almost like the Corey Taylor slash Connor McGregor autograph that he is doing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Then, so I'm going to go see, go see them for at least one game um, and see what I can't get done there. I don't have any clue about the – much like you were flying blind, I'll be flying blind because I don't have any clue if they um, allow autographs at the Grasshopper Stadium, if they will let you try. But my guess is because the NFL released a statement too saying this year no autographs, none. Mm. But I've already seen people getting like – it's magic at camp. Some people got um, yeah a couple of um, uh, Chiefs wide receivers. I think like just drafted. So oh, okay, I think, yeah, I think that's more of just like a CYA kind of thing. Like we have to put this statement out, or else people are going to lose their mind. And then you know, if we put this statement out, and the players still you know interact with fans, then they can't say it's the MLB's fault or some weird shit like that. I don't know, but I still plan on going to a Panthers practice until they tell me to F off. So, yeah, you know, and that, that's kind of the thing. Sometimes it's got to be trial by error. Cause like I said, even with the Chihuahuas website, it said on just one section, no autographs are allowed, but then you show up at the game and everybody's graphing, you know, now granted there wasn't a lot, I mean, there was only like, and that was only the second day that there was four or five people there uh, trying to get autographs. And uh, yeah, I don't think anybody told us no, other than I screwed up and asked that day's starting pitcher for an autograph. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, but other than that, everybody was really cool. Uh, and then, yeah, but uh one of, one of the other weird things is I thought I would hate the uh, the way they're doing the schedules this year where instead of a three-game series with one team and then a three-game series with another, like these week-long series, it's actually kind of cool. You know, you go there and uh, you have plenty of time to try and knock everybody out. Now, the bad thing is, is if that team's coming in during a week where, you know, you can't make it, then – that's the that was your only chance to see them because they're trying to cut down with uh, the travel and everything. But uh, oh, other uh, I know I'm running long, but uh, one of the other things that I've seen uh, Manfred's uh, genius. So they've they've added uh, two weeks onto the end of the minor league schedule. I don't know if you caught this at all, but it's for AAA. So years past, the AAA was divided into the Pacific Coast League and the International League. The champions of those leagues would meet up at a neutral site, uh, usually somewhere in the middle of America. I, Well, not really middle, but it was uh, – past couple years, it was like Oklahoma City, right? And then they would have a three-game series, and that was the AAA champion. But now they're doing this thing. It's called the home, the home stretch. So it's – it's two five-game series. It's a home-and-home home with a random AAA team in your league. So, but, yeah, I see you're getting that forced Whitaker eye. But they've announced the schedule right now before, like, they could even see who's in a playoff hunt. And they've just created this final stretch home stretch uh trophy or something it's it's the weirdest shit i've ever heard it's absolutely stupid but it's an extra five games another chance for me to go to el paso and see some minor league baseball so the minor league season's going till october which is just insane yeah that uh the triple a season's going to october i i can't believe it but yeah so but uh yeah Anyway, uh, I got nothing else going on. 
Uh, catch me out on Twitter, please. Charm City Graphs, uh, Facebook, Charm City Autographs, and our YouTube channel uh, that you're probably watching. And uh, Chasing the Graph, what you got, brother? Chasing the Graph on Facebook just hit over 12,000 followers, which is impressive because it's hard as shit to get followers. 12,000? 1,200. Oh, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> If I ever get 12,000, I think I just might, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. Probably jump in the pool with all my clothes on or something. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. But, yeah, just hit over uh, 1,200 followers there. Um, Chasing the Graph on Twitter and Chasing the Graph 8 on Instagram, which if you watch this channel, if you watch the show, you know I really never use it. Yeah. And then uh... – Take a ton of photos when you go to Hickory. Uh, I didn't take that many photos like a dumbass. And, uh, yeah, post them on your social media so everybody can uh, check out what you're up to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so trying to line up some more guests. Hopefully uh, we'll get some of them on soon so that way it's not just us all the time. But, uh, yeah, uh, we will see you guys next week, same time. So thanks, everyone.